Good morning. Welcome to the White Plains Presbyterian Church. Whether you are here in person or watching this later, it is great to have you with us. Our guest preacher today is Reverend G.E. Williams. Welcome back, Reverend Williams. In John 15, Jesus says, I am the vine and you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit because apart from me, you can do nothing. Keeping that image in mind, this morning, may we feel rooted in the word. May your connection to the vine of Christ be strengthened. And may we grow toward the powerful light of God and be prepared to bear fruit to share with the world. Uh, let's join together responsibly for the call to worship. Rejoice in the Lord, O oh, you God's beloved. For the word of the Lord is upright. And all God's word is done and faithfulness. Our God loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the steadfast love of the Lord. Our first hymn is hymn number 14, For the Beauty of the Earth.
Please join me in the prayer of confession, followed by a brief time of silent prayer. Merciful God, you are always drawing the circle of your love wider, but often we resist. You that all people are your beloved, and we ask, why? Why them? Even them? We are quick to judge others rather than being grateful that we, too, are included in the fold. We prioritize the privileged, the powerful, the people who look and act right. But you extend grace first to the sinner, the outcast, and the marginalized. Forgive us, O oh God. Transform us, that we may show mercy as you show mercy. Amen. When the woman touched Jesus' cloak, he told her, Take heart, daughter, your faith has made you well. Indeed, we are made well and whole, not because of ourselves, but through the grace of God. In Jesus Christ we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Since God loves and welcomes us, we also ought to love and welcome one another. May the peace of Christ be with you. Let us now share the peace of Christ with each other safely. So I guess uh, my parents were merciful to me 
They didn't give me the punishment that I really deserved at that particular time. And that's what we acknowledge. If we, as a confession, if we confess that we have done wrong, uh, God is merciful. God is not interested in giving us the punishment that we deserve. He's more interested in giving us the grace we also want to deserve. So, uh, so that's what I'm talking about today uh, in the sermon that the Father said, the Son of the Redeemer, Jesus Christ is the Son of the Redeemer because he's more interested in us repenting so that we can receive his mercy and also his grace. What's your name? Good morning. Um, I am not going to be able to, I'm going upstairs with Anthony, so I wanted to make an announcement before I left, so I'm a little out of order. A Anthony's handing out some um, flyers. The, the Christian Ed Committee is sponsoring a potluck luncheon. That would be on June 25th, and um, we need people to tell us if they're coming so we could plan appropriate food, and if they're bringing anything, that would be wonderful what you're bringing. You can fill out the forms and um, put them in the um, offering plates um, for the next couple of weeks, this week and next week. And also, uh, next, this Friday night, the 16th, the Christian Ed is having their um, third monthly game night, family game night, but everybody's invited. We're all a big family. So if you can, um, you're welcome. We hope to see you. We have a really, we have a fun time. You don't need to, you don't need to do anything except come. <laughs> Come and be willing to play. <laughs> Thank you. Hope to see you all there. pray. God beyond all knowing, you are shrouded in wonder and mystery, and yet as close to us as our very breath. By your Spirit, illuminate our hearts and minds through your word, that we may follow you more faithfully. Amen. First scripture reading 
is from Psalm 33, verses 1 to 12, the greatness and goodness of God. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous. Praise befits the upright. Praise the Lord with the lyre. Make melody to him with the harp of ten strings. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully on the strings with loud shouts. For the word of the Lord is upright, and all his work is done in faithfulness. He loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the steadfast love of the Lord. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made, and all their host by the breath of his mouth. He gathered the waters of the seas as in a bottle. He put the deeps in storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spoke, and it came to be. He commanded, and it stood firm. The Lord brings the counsel of the nations to nothing. He frustrates the plans of the peoples. The counsel of the Lord stands forever, the thoughts of his heart to all generations. Happy is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people whom he has chosen as his heritage. The Gospel this morning is from Matthew chapter 9, verses 9 through 13, and verses 18 through 26. Listen to the word of God. As Jesus went on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax collector's booth. Follow me, he told him, and Matthew got up and followed him. While Jesus was having din dinner at Matthew's house, many tax collectors and sinners came and ate with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they asked his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? On hearing this, Jesus said, It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. While he was saying this, a ruler came and knelt before him and said, my daughter has just died, but come and put your hand on her and she will live. Jesus got up and went with him and so did his disciples. Just then a woman who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years came up and said, I apologize, came up behind him and touched the edge of his cloak. She said to herself, if only I touch his cloak, I will be healed. Jesus turned and saw her. Take heart, daughter, he said. Your faith has healed you. And the woman was healed from that moment. When Jesus entered the ruler's house and saw the flute players and the noisy crowd, he said, Go away. The girl is not dead, but asleep. But they laughed at him. After the crowd had been put outside, he went in and took the girl by the hand, and she got up. News of this spread through all that region. This is the reading of the gospel, the word of the Lord. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, 
not sacrifice. For I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. God has established a covenant or agreement with us that is based upon love. Uh, the first time I ever heard the word covenant, I was around 19 years old. Uh, you know, I was in my, um, my um, hometown of Detroit and my parents were moving us from where we had lived for 16 years to, a, to another home where, you know, where I was only there for four years because, that, you know, I, was, I went away to seminary. And that was the first time I heard a covenant because in the covenant of the house, it, it said uh, what type of people could not live, could not buy that house. So that was an agreement in that particular neighborhood. Now with Adam in the beginning, it was a covenant of works that God established with us and with Adam's uh, uh, progeny. Now with Jesus Christ, it is no longer a covenant of works. It is a covenant of grace through faith, wherein God gives us the good things we do not deserve. But in both cases, whether it's a covenant of works uh, or, and I should say, and a covenant of grace, it is based upon God's love for us. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice, for I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. In the scripture from Matthew, Jesus and his apostles went from the Gadarenes and he saw a man named Matthew, also called uh, Levi in some other Bibles, the author of this book that bears his name. He was a tax collector and he was despised by the people because he worked on behalf of the Romans. The Lord called for him to follow him. Matthew responded by leaving his tax collector's booth and he followed Christ. And so we know he became famous. He authored the book, the first, well, the gospel, that's the first gospel in our Bibles. Later, Christ and his apostles had dinner at Matthew's house. They were joined by many tax collectors and, quote, sinners, end of quote, in the eyes of the Pharisees. Because the Pharisees looked at the other people as sinners. Certainly they looked at tax collectors as sinners. The Pharisees, seeing the tax collectors and the sinners partaking of the meal as guests of Matthew, inquired of the, the disciples, asking them, why does their teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? When Jesus heard this question, he replied by stating that it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the ill who need medical attention. Who in us, you know, how many of us in our lives have gone to the doctor routinely. I mean, when, when we weren't sick, you know. Uh, you know, but as we, you know, as we, I certainly didn't do it when I was young. Um, you know, I go to the doctor now all the time because <laughs> I'm no young. I want to stay healthy. I'm healthy. I want to stay healthy. So you'll see me uh, uh, on the uh, 29th of this month, I'm heading to the VA in Montrose. Uh, to meet with my podiatrist, any ailment, you know. I, now I'm in a, a maintenance level, you know, maintenance level of health, not uh, not cure, you know, healing, just to maintain my health. So, but then Jesus said, he announced his mission, and his mission was that he had come into the world not to call the righteous, but sinners. 
He was sent by his father because the father desires mercy, not sacrifice. The father, because he is merciful, you know, there's that um, in the Bible, uh, God is gracious and, uh, you know, he does not desire the death of anyone, but that all may come to repentance and be saved. The father, because he is merciful, desires not to inflict the punishment on us that we deserve. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice, for I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Jesus Christ, as it says in the Psalms, is the sacrifice to end all sacrifices. But in the history of redemption, there was a time when sacrifices by God's people were appropriate and necessary. That was before Christ's sacrifice on the cross. But there was an era, era when Saul was king of Israel. He was instructed by Samuel the prophet and judge of Israel at the time to wait for him to come and offer a sacrifice before he, Saul, went and led the army to attack the Philistines. Now, I guess I could understand Saul somewhat. Some of his soldiers were abandoning, deserting, and he became impatient of waiting for Samuel and offered an authorized sacrifice. When Samuel arrived, he reprimanded Saul and stated with God that obedience is better than sacrifice. That certainly is the truth because if we obey, then we don't have to offer a sacrifice. Saul's sacrifice was works because God did not call for him to offer it. Offering unauthorized sacrifices on our part, trying to appease God for our disobedience, is an effort on our part of righteousness. It is self-righteousness. When we disobey God, we need to be penitent. We need to repent. We need to ask God's forgiveness. Not offer sacrifices when sacrifices ended in the sacrifice of Christ. God the Father does not desire us to earn our righteousness because as Isaiah said in the old King James, our righteousness is nothing more than filthy rags. He wants us to confess our sins and he will respond in kind with his mercy. This means that we will not have to fear God because he will not inflict upon us the punishment we deserve for our disobedience. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice, for I have not come to call the righteous but sinners. Christ desires mercy from us and not sacrifice. He wants us to be merciful. We can receive his mercy through faith. As Paul says in Ephesians, we are saved by grace through faith. Do we want mercy from him? Mercy will be ours only if we confess our sins. Christ says to us that he came to call sinners and not the righteous. Now it comes down to whether we consider ourselves to be sinners or righteous persons. You know, the Bible, Paul says in Romans, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. 
So the world, we in good company because the world is full of sinners because all, everyone is a sinner. In this world, you know, there are what we call unredeemed sinners and then there are called redeemed sinners. So I would assume that all of us here today are redeemed sinners. Redeemed by Christ because Christ has taken our place. So we are, in terms of our ability, incapable of personally, perfectly, and certainly perpetually obeying God's law. So answering Christ's call, we confess our sins and receive salvation from us. In that we have been saved, we are redeemed. And I first learned the uh, concept of redemption, not in the church, but, you know, my parents, you know, when my father did the food shop, he would come back with these green stamps, I was all these stamps that would be issued. And, and then my mother had me and my sister to pay, you know, to, you know, to put the water on them and put them in the book. And then my father would take them to the redemption center, you know, Mike, you might redeem the stamps for a toaster, you know, and, you know, uh, you know. So, so Christ has redeemed us. He died on the cross to redeem us, so that we would become God's people, that we would become the the sanctified through Christ of God. We will become God's people, enfolded into the flock of whom Jesus Christ is the chief shepherd. Since Christ is merciful to us, he will give us what we need throughout life. Yes, he is merciful. He desires mercy. He has been merciful to us, blocking the punishment from God that we deserve, but he is also gracious to us giving us what we don't deserve, the good. And, and, you know, as I get older, you know, I didn't think about this when I was younger, but as I get older, and I think about each morning, I say, you know, why is God so good to me? I mean, I, I certainly don't deserve the good things that I have, a place to live, water to drink, food to eat, clothing to wear, a family. I mean, I just don't deserve this in terms of what I have done. It's nothing more than the grace of God. God's grace. And when I pray each morning, I pray God is loving. He's gracious. Well, he's, first I say he's loving, he's merciful, he's gracious, he's faithful. Then I remind myself that he is righteous, he is just, and he is wrathful because God hates sin and God cannot tolerate sin. But through all of that, he's still merciful because he does not want to give anyone the punishment we all deserve. But go and learn what this means I desire mercy, not sacrifice, for I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Amen. Amen. Now is, it is time for hymn number 11, Sovereign, Source and Sovereign, Rock and Cloud.
Let us pray. Almighty God, Eternal Father, we adore you because you are the Creator and the Provident One, because you are the Redeemer in Jesus Christ. We adore you with Christ because you are the Lord and giver of life and the Holy Spirit. We adore you with Christ and the Spirit because you yourself are the truth, yourself and the Holy Scriptures. We thank you, Father, for sending Christ into the world to save us from our sins. We thank you for calling us, regenerating us, justifying us, adopting us, and continuing to sanctify us and in that last day glorifying us. We thank you that Christ through the Holy Spirit enables us to persevere through the trials of life. We thank you for the human relationships of family and friends. We thank you that we have water to drink, food to eat, clothing to wear, and homes in which to live. We thank you, Father, that one of our own has found a rule, room praising you. Oh, Father, we pray today for people who are presently in a period of bereavement, such as Kelly and family and the passing of their mother. We pray for those who are sick and shut in. Father, we pray that you bless the church we pray for all churches that are part of the Church of Jesus Christ. We pray for this church here, White Plains Presbyterian Church. We pray that pastors and teachers and all ministers of the Word will guard the souls of Christ's flock with the gospel of biblical peace. Father, we pray your blessings upon the staff of the YWCA the residents, and we pray for the family of the one who requested the prayer for the White Plains YWCA. We pray for the church also in accordance with the request. Father, we pray for children who are separated from families by depression. We pray for good results of the students who are in the process of completing this school year. Father, I pray for Elder Isette Swaby Lipton who's a member of our neighboring church, Hitchcock Church, who lost her husband a week and a half ago. Father, I pray for the President of the United States, Joseph R. Biden Jr., the Governor of the State of New York in which we live, Kathy Hochul, and also within the State of New York who have governing jurisdiction on the level of county, especially the county executive of the county of Westchester in which we live, George S. Leatherman, and municipality, especially the mayor of the city of White Plains in which some of us live, Thomas M. Rhodes Jr., pray that you grant to each one a spirit of wisdom and godly fear that as each one governs his or her jurisdiction, this nation, this state, this county and this city will be strengthened in righteousness, enriched in order and liberty, preserved in unity and peace, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. Since we last gathered here, Father, perhaps there have been faithful people who have been discharged from the church militant and admitted into the church triumphant. 
We praise you for their faithfulness and obedience to Christ while they live. And we pray that by your grace working in us, that also worked in them while they live, that we too may be faithful and obedient to Christ unto death. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, Savior, Master, and Redeemer, and in the Holy Spirit, as we offer the prayer he taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. We'll now continue our worship with the presentation of our tithes and offerings.
to seek Christ's face, for those who seek him will surely find. Go forth to love and serve the Lord by loving and serving one another. And as you go, may Christ's grace uphold you. May God's love surround you. And may the Spirit's energy sustain you now and forever. Amen. Amen.